So I rewatched yesterday's Vikings Bucks game in all its glory. And I tell you what, there are some good things to take away from that game as far as feeling optimistic for the rest of the season. Conversely, there are also some bad things to take away, most of which I think can be immediately corrected. One in particular, I have no idea what the solution is. I'm going to provide a suggestion. We'll see what adjustments the Vikings actually make in that department. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. But first, starting with the good. On offense, Alexander Madison is a fighter. You look at his stats yesterday, 11 carries, 34 yards, 3.1 yards per carry, not great. You look at that and say, well, clearly he did not have a good game. What the hell are you talking about? But this is an example of stats and numbers not necessarily telling the whole story. I think the hand that he was dealt yesterday, not just yesterday, but quite possibly through the rest of the season is really unfair to him. He should keep his head up high because he fought his ass off. We'll talk about the cause of that a little bit later in this video. Jordan Addison, the bona fide wide receiver two for this team. That 39-yard touchdown play was spectacular. He, along with Jefferson, are certified route running specialists. Jefferson, in particular, against the zone defense. So I don't know what the timeshare was for Tampa, uh, their defense yesterday, as far as percentage in man coverage, percentage in zone, but particularly against the zone. Jefferson, the deep throws over the middle, 218 work damn near every time, if not every time for at least 20 yards, to where once the ball was in his hands, the next nearest defender was maybe three yards away. So knowing that information with the route running capabilities of Jefferson and Addison, man coverage, you pick and choose your battles. Sure. But against the zone, hey, send someone in motion, see what the defense, see how they react. If you know it's a zone defense that you're going up against in that particular snap, know in the back of your head that we have a chance to make a big time play right here. On defense, the Brian Flores led defense. Harrison Phillips was amazing. He was a big time factor for why Tampa only averaged 2.2 yards per carry. Just a stone wall on that defensive line. Makai Blackman at one point on one snap was on a deep island versus Mike Evans of all receivers. Mono Imano, the ball went in his direction and got the pass breakup. Nice play by him. So far looking like a pretty solid draft pick. We'll see how he develops the rest of the season. Jordan Hicks and Ivan Pace over the middle, they were fantastic. They were all over the place getting after it, making plays left and right. The only knack I have is it has nothing to do with them but where was 33 where was Brian Asamoah I was really looking forward to seeing him play did he even play if so how many snaps but either way Hicks and Pace they were great Josh Metellus if you want to nitpick that touchdown given up to Mike Evans go ahead and do that that's on you I'm going to choose not to do that you're going to give up plays. You're going to give up scores. If you're a defense, you're not going to shut out every single opponent that you face. How do you respond after the fact? The point, the fact is that by the time Evan scored that touchdown, there was a minute and 14 seconds left in the first half. Leading up to that, the defense, including Metellus, got so many stops to give the Vikings offense ample opportunities to put points on the board and after that play Josh Metellus was still great he had a damn good game the defense put themselves in position in particular that nine minute drive that Tampa opened up the third quarter with I counted at least four snaps to where the defense ever so closely made plays behind the line of scrimmage for a TFL to back that thing up and just off the skin of their teeth Tampa pulled some yardage out their butts 
just off a miracle at least four times. That's something to where it's like, you know what, the offense, they just made good plays, but you were right there. It's not like on that drive, you got your asses kicked. You didn't. They ended up giving up a touchdown on that drive. Really not. They actually got to stop because they forced the field goal at one point, but then Jay Ward lined up offsides. That gave them a fresh set of downs. Then they scored a touchdown with Trey Palmer. But the defense is going to be so exciting to watch. They're, in fact, we're going to have to rely on them a lot more if the Vikings are going to win games this year. Now going to the bad. Talked about Jay Ward. That's just discipline. Just don't line up offsides and you'll be fine. You'll give up three points instead of seven. Kirk Cousins, three turnovers yesterday. Oddly enough, none of which... I particularly blame Kirk Cousins for. You had Ed Ingram given his best Mike Tyson impression, punching the ball out off the snap. That led to a fumble. You had the sack fumble. Antoine Winfield Jr. made that play. He, pre-snap, played that so perfectly. It looked like he was going to drop back in coverage that by the time after the ball snapped, once he decided to go ahead and rush Kirk Cousins, that the offensive line, they were already occupied. They never accounted for him. They didn't even know he was coming. Kirk didn't even know that he was coming. And then the interception, you could make the argument, KJ Osborne, you just got a man up. You may have gotten punked on that play. It was in your hands. Yes, it was a little bit behind you, but one could say it was in your hands. You should have made that play. But where I do fault Kirk... On top of what I already said yesterday, not even going to rehash that. Go ahead and watch the video if you want. Justin Jefferson, two things here. Not targeting him in the red zone. I don't understand. This seems to have been, continues to be an issue ever since Jefferson got drafted by the Vikings. To where it seems like every time Kirk goes inside the twenty. He will look for and target any and everybody not named Justin Jefferson. He'll throw a deep corner pass to Alexander Madison. He'll throw to Johnny Munt. He'll throw to KJ Osborne. He'll throw to Josh Oliver. Anybody not named Jefferson, which is crazy because he's the best receiver in the league. Statistically, he's on track to being one of the greatest of all time. Not targeting him in the red zone is un unacceptable. You need to switch that up real quick. Furthermore, in the first half, Jefferson had 138 yards. That's pretty great. He finished the game with 150 yards, which means that he only got 12 receiving yards in the second half. Also unacceptable. You had no run game to work with. Outside of the couple of plays that Addison made, Jefferson was the primary reason why you were able to move the ball up the field to give your offense a chance to put some points on the board. How do you explain Kirk Cousins' 12 receiving yards for the best receiver in the league in the second half after getting 138 in the first? That can't happen again, ever again. This next point is more on coaching, not going for it on fourth and eight with four minutes left down three. It really rubbed me the wrong way because I feel like you needed to be aggressive there. You didn't get the ball back again after that. Tampa, they just ran the clock out and it was curtains. You lost that game. But the interior offensive lineman, and you know what? Okay. The first half, I thought they were not bad. Not great, but not bad. Not terrible. The second half, it went completely to hell. And it, this is, we already know about their poor pass protection issues. But the one thing you could say about the O-line as a whole, including the interior, is that at least they can run block. They're, they're pretty solid at run blocking. Screen passes, getting out in space, generating momentum, athletic dudes that can build up some speed before engaging with their blocks. Somehow, someway, they have regressed. Off of what I saw yesterday, they can't even run block effectively. 
That's what Alexander Madison had to work with. It seemed like, especially under center, every time that Kirk turned around to hand the ball to Madison to number two, there was a player from Tampa's defense already in the backfield. He had to break tackles and fight his ass off. It was really unfair. And even in the screen game, listen, if you want to throw wide receiver screens far wide outside to your receiver, that's fine. Especially if the corners are going to play five, seven yards off the, the line of scrimmage, go ahead and do that. But the tight end screens inside to where you need the interior offensive line to be there, any plays, the tight end screens, goodness, any plays to where every 12 formations, plays where everybody's jumbled up together, you need to spread that you almost need to dumb the offense down. You need to spread the defense. Get, get yourself some space to work with. That's how bad the interior offensive line has been. Even on run plays, handing the ball off in shotgun, doing what you got to do to get some yards because what at least worked last year with a piss poor interior offensive line is even worse this time around. It's not as effective as it was last year. That's a problem. And you could say, well, it's... They faced Kalijah Kansi and Vita Vea yesterday. All right, that's an elite defensive line. But you also have upcoming against Philly this Thursday night, Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, Jalen Carter, against Carolina, Derek Brown, against Green Bay, Kenny Clark times two, against San Francisco, Eric Armstead, Javon Hargrave. That's five games upcoming throughout the rest of your season to where you know you're facing some serious juggernauts on the defensive line. On top of dumbing the offense down, I don't know if this is, this isn't going to necessarily remedy the situation and solve all of the problems, but sign Dalton Reisner. I don't know why you didn't sign him after you met with him before the season started. I don't know why I don't see an alert right now saying that the Vikings have signed Dalton Reisner. It will at least help to some degree but I tell you what, man, I went on the Vikings website, their official website, their staff members section, player personnel slash football administration. I counted 33 individuals listed there. Add the general manager, that makes 34. 34 people. Last year, Kirk Cousins was the most hit quarterback in the league particularly because of the interior offensive line, which indicated that this is a clear problem that should be addressed heading into the offseason. And you choose to do nothing? Not even nothing. Absolutely nothing? 34 individuals. 34 different people. And... In this section, this particular part of the team, interior offensive line, 34 individuals having some sort of influence over the roster that evidently don't know what the hell it is they're doing. One out of 34 can say, hey guys, listen, <laughs> the interior offensive line, it's a problem. Here are the players that I'm looking at. Let me know your thoughts. Get back to me whenever you can. Nobody could do that. Not one. Listen, man, um, Kwesi Adafo Mensa, are we allowed, are we allowed to critique him yet? I'm just checking. Or does he get a lifetime pass? Is he bulletproof because he's charming and a smooth talker and uses big words? Let me know in the comment section below. That's inexcusable, bro. That, that's, that's absolutely ridiculous.